Well, coming up on today's show, Mercedes slow down their plug-in hybrid range before they speed it up again. Good luck today to the VW Pikes Peak electric racer. And Geely owner Lee Shufu says he has big plans for what is it at the moment just the London black taxi, but why you could be taking a ride in one where you live very soon. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Hello and welcome to the Sunday, the 24th of June edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Well, we'll start with the remote speed limiter. Tesla has enabled with a software push, and Stephen Loveday at Inside EVs writes that Tesla's recent over-the-air update has added a speed-limiting feature available via the mobile app. So why would you do that? Well, if you've waited a couple of years for your precious new Model 3 and you lend it to a friend, you leave it somewhere for a service, the kids take it out, or you even leave it with a valet, you might want to restrict how much of that performance they can use. Maybe the top speed's going to be 50 or 60 or 70, maybe for the valet. It's five and a half miles an hour. (laughs) Careful with it. I've waited a long time for that car. Well, according to Electrek, this new feature is part of the software version 2018.24 and Tesla mobile app update. 3.4.1. While the feature can be controlled via your smartphone and the Tesla app, you'll still have to be with the car to enable it whilst it is in park mode. Well, moving on to Mercedes, they seem to be slowing down their plug-in push before they speed it up again. CNET reports that Mercedes is pulling its plug-in hybrids off the market, but wait for the punchline. Uh, The plug-in hybrids, the C-Class, GLC and GLE-Class models are uh, nearing the end or have neared the end of their lifetime on the market but it's only because they're making room they're readying space for the next gen replacements which are due next year now the outgoing plug-in models are being replaced with eq branded models that feature mercedes nine speed transmission and electric motor unit all in one So EQ is the name for any form of electrification in a Mercedes-Benz, not just pure electrics by the look of it. That's kind of new news to me. I thought EQ was just going to be the name for their electric cars, not the ones with the combustion engines, the plug-ins as well. On the topic of the next era of plug-ins, CarBuzz say that the top speed in the future Mercedes electric plug-in cars uh, has been raised to 87 miles an hour, up from 81 miles an hour in the Gen 2 models. In addition, the electric range is up to 31 miles compared to only 21 miles in the second gen. Well, moving on to the big race today, the big event today, Sunday the 24th of June, uh, that would be the race at Pikes Peak. Sporttechie.com report the VW's IDR, the Pikes Peak Racer, uh, is, which was unveiled back in April now, will debut today, equipped with two electric motors to get it 0-60 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. The car was faster than any other vehicle up the first 5.2 miles of the course. In qualifying earlier in the week on Wednesday, uh, the course's design makes even finishing difficult for not only the humans but gas powered cars as well it's really thin air and it depletes the racer's energy and the car's engine capacity of course as the air thins uh, not so much air goes through the internal combustion engine there's not as much oxygen to combust and it reduces performance of ice cars hmm do you ever think about electric cars if you use them at sea level or 4,000 metres up in the air. Any degradation in performance? No, I didn't think so. Just another reason to drive electric. Well, moving on to how you get around in terms of taxis and cabs and Chris Gubbies, the chief exec of LEVC, the London Electric Vehicle Company. He said this, I quote, if you take this quintessentially London product, the famous London black cab, and turn it zero emission a purpose-designed taxi. It can become a transport solution and a contributor to improving air quality in London, yes, in every major city around the world, yes. Geely's founder, Lee Shufu, wants to bring the product to the new world and the new generation. And that's according to an interview with the South China Morning Post. Well, Geely paid £11 million, that's about 15, 14.6 million US dollars, uh, five years ago now for the London taxi company. Nothing really. Why was it so little? Well, the company wasn't in great shape. Uh, followed by a 300 or £295 million pound investment uh, to build a brand new factory with an annual capacity of 20,000 vehicles. Look, I know it's small change when we're counting down to maybe one day 
Tesla will make 5,000 Model 3s a week. We've seen those, maybe, yeah, we'll talk about it in a second, those massive car parking lots of Model 3s lined up. 20,000 a year is not big. It's not small change either, uh, bearing in mind some of those big VW factories can make over 800,000 cars in a year. Uh, also, Geely invested $30 million in developing a commercial van. Meanwhile, work began last month on a $1.1 billion, here we go, $1.1 billion US dollar factory in Yiwu in China, uh, with the capacity of 100,000 vehicles a year, pure electric. Now, that model is going to be a variant of the famous London Black Cab. It's going to be modified and adapted to China. Chinese preferences and tastes to serve the segment of the premium ride-hailing services in China. And then, once that's done, I expect to see a lot of them all around the world. Finally, PV Buzz reports that Honda flipped the switch on a brand new solar energy system at the American Honda Motor Company campus in Torrance, California, one of the largest solar arrays on a commercial building in Southern California. It is two megawatts of current, one of Honda's largest on-site renewable energy installations on the planet. Well, the new solar array re features 6,000 panels and expected ge to generate 3,000 megawatt hours hours annually great news today uh, a quick mention on what we've been looking at on socials by the way thank you so much firstly to all of the positive comments over the last two days on friday i uh, did a little interview we called germany and phil roberts one of the listeners to the podcast who runs a um, solar installation a battery installation ev company as well here in the uk i uh, was out in germany and invited me to call him to get an update on the podcast that went down very well yesterday we had if you haven't heard it yet by the way download what is labeled saturday special interview uh, with a uk i'll call them a startup they've been going a few years now but we'll call them a startup uh, making electric range extended trucks and yesterday's interview was all about how they're doing that here in the uk and how they are electrifying urban freight really positive comments online following that they're called teva motors go check them out listen to yesterday's show if you haven't heard it yet uh, download that for your monday morning commute if you're lining this up for a brand new week hello to you if you're listening in the car anywhere around the world fascinating interview in the meantime if you do want to stack a few up uh, for your commute or well, all previous 159 episodes of this is on itunes google play spotify youtube TuneIn, stitcher and the blog which is evnewsdaily.com it's all online free and if you subscribe you get them first and automatically it takes a weight off your mind haven't got to think about it if you want to follow us on the socials or come and say hi have a chat over the weekend uh, search ev news daily you'll find us we're on there have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow